All rise. We will be. The International Criminal Court is now in session. The Dance of the Court Penal International, eight of it. Please be seated. Boyo versus one. Thank you very much. Court officer, please call the case. Merci, Monsieur le Président. La situation en République du Kenya dans l'affaire Le Procureur contre William Samoe Ruto et Joshua Arabsang. ICC 0109-011. Nous sommes en audience publique. Thank you. Any changes in appearances? Mr. President, Your Honours, good morning. No, no change for the prosecution. Good morning, uh, Mr. President, Your Honours. No change from us either. Good morning, Your Honours. For the same team, we remain the same. Uh, we're the same. That is Ms. Jowraj, Ms. Sullivan, and uh, Ms. Ms. Morgan. And we're joined again today by Mr. Khan and Ms. Ada Gendra. Thank you. Witness, welcome back uh, to the stand. Um, we're in open session. Uh, Mr. Pugliati will continue his examination in chief. Uh, may I remind you again of uh, what I told you at the beginning? Uh, listen carefully to the questions. Answer just the questions and wait for the next question to be asked of you. Also, try your best to observe the five seconds pause rule of thumb. Uh, thank you. Mr. Pugliati. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'd like to commence continuing questions this morning in private session if the court's minded. For how long? Uh, I, I should say uh, up front that much of what we intend to ask the question in this morning's session will be in private session. There are one or two points where we feel we can take the evidence back into public, but uh, much of this morning's session we submit needs to be private. The first private session, approximately five minutes, then about five minutes of public, and then we would seek to continue in private. Um, do your best to minimize the need for private session, especially with the uh, protected information sheet um, that has been prepared to enable that to be done. We will go into private session now. Nous sommes en audience publique, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Pugliati. Witness, we're back in public session. Where we left off your testimony yesterday, you told the court that on the evening or the night time of the 31st of December, you'd arrived at location number 17 and you'd met up with persons 24, 25, and 26. Do you recall that? I do. And I'd asked you if you'd spent the night there and you said you did. Correct. So now I'd like to ask you about the next morning, January the 1st, and use the sheet in front of you if you need to, but did you stay at location number 17 or did you go somewhere else on the morning of January 1st? On the morning of January 1st, there were more reports of attacks at an area called uh, which is not here, but the area is called Kasarani, and I and many other reports of attacks still coming in from um, the location that I lived. All right, uh, witness, let's do this. Um, 
just to remind you of the need to listen to the question and just respond to it. The prosecutor's question was, did you go somewhere else on the morning of January 31st? If you did, it's best to just say that and wait for any more questions for, from the prosecutor. Um, the reason I say that is if you begin to develop your answer before you give it, uh, we run the risk of you slipping in identifying information in there, uh, quite apart from matters that what you may be putting onto the record um, may be something that the prosecutor doesn't really need for purposes of the job he's doing. Just listen to his question and answer it, and he will ask you further question, uh, follow-up questions if he needs to. So the question is, did you remain there or did you go somewhere else? I went to, I went somewhere else, location 23, to the person of, to the home of person number 23. And where was person number 23's home? It was located within location number 13. And what time did you go to person number 23's house? I arrived there with person number 24, 25 and 26 at 10. Now, on the way to this person's house, did you see anything on the road? Yes, I did. Can you tell the court what you saw? I saw very many people also moving. And at one point uh, on the road, I, I happened to see people moving toward the direction, uh, which is uh, location number 15, close to location number 15. And when I moved closer, I saw some two human heads that had been chopped off from the main body. And were you able to tell what ethnicity these heads and bodies were? The people who were around there were talking and say, saying uh, lower. Now you said you saw many people on the road. What ethnicity were these people? A mixture of Kikuyus and Luyas. And do you know where they came from? Most of them came from the location where I lived, and the others came from location number 13. And do you know where they were going? Yes, all of them were going towards the direction of the police station in location number 13. And why were they going to that police station? They were fleeing from the attacks. Did they say who had attacked them? Yes. The Kikus were around location number 15 and were saying they were attacked by the Luos, while the rest who came from the uh, farm where I lived or had been attacked by the Kalinjins. And you said you arrived at person number 23's house at approximately 10 in the morning, is that correct? Correct. Mr. President, at this point, I'd request we go back into private session. I have some follow-up questions. Uh, on this incident, which would take uh, two or three minutes, and then I'd like to move into a new topic, which I estimate will take 10 to 15 minutes of questioning.
but should but should be hopefully no more than that. Are you moving away from the incident of the decapitated heads, or are you coming back to it? I had no more questions on the heads in particular. I had follow-up questions regarding this course of events and, and the witness's journey at this time. Witness, you said people who were with you, let's say that the decapitated heads were lower heads. Sure. Um, what were the ethnicities or ethnicity of those with you at the time? Who said that? It was said by people in the crowd. And I mentioned that uh, I identified a majority of them to be Kikuyus and lawyers. Was there any theory as to what had occurred? I have not got that question properly. When they say that the decapitated heads belonged to Luas, was there any theory as to why? Um, two Luas would have been decapitated. Yes. What was that theory? That uh, the Luas were the ones who were responsible for breaking into businesses belonging to Kikuyus and uh, looting. And so it was a revenge or uh, that's what I would put, that's how I understood it was a retaliation. Retaliation meted out by who? I did not understand who did that. Thank you. Prosecutor, you may ask follow-up questions. I have none, but thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Well, I re reiterate my request uh, that we enter private session. A private session, then. Nous sommes en audience publique, Monsieur le Président. Witness, we're, we're back in open session now, and I just have a, a last few, few questions to ask you before I finish. Uh, we're now in early January 2008. Uh, did you observe anything in Eldoret Town around early January? Yes. I observed that there were so many people belonging to the Kikuyu community moving out of town in buses, and in trucks. And some of the trucks were being escorted by military personnel. Do you know where these Kikuyus were headed? Yes, some of them were saying they were headed for the central province of Kenya. But most of them were making a stop over at Naku before they decide where to go. And do you know why they were being escorted? Yes, I came to understand that uh, the road towards Nakuru had um, the Kalenjin attackers lined along the roads with, uh, with all manner of weapons. And so it was not safe for the Kikuyus to travel without an escort. And if you can, do you recall approximately what date it was that you saw this? It was date beyond 
4th, 4th January. Uh, approximately how much beyond, if you can? It was not at one day off, it was about three days from 4th, 5th, 6th and 7th. And was anybody saying anything to these people as they were leaving? Yes, I remember at one point when I was trying to cross over the main road towards the cathedral church, I stood among some three or four Kalenjin. And when the buses were transporting these kikuyus, I heard them say that uh, your last destination should be Othaya. What was that word? Was it cathedral church? True. Yes, okay. And where is Othaya? It is in central province of Kenya. And would you have any idea why these Kalenjins said this as the Kikuyus were leaving? I understood it to mean that um, since they were, they had attacked or Kikuyu farms, they were actually driving them away from uh, their farms so that they could go to to live in their in, in those areas they were going to central province. Now after the violence, the Kikuyus from Yamumbi, did they return to live on their farms? They took a lot of time before they came to live in their farms, but that was much later. So where were they living before that? Most of them were living in a camp that was located close to Yamumbi. And some of them were live, or had rented houses in Kipkara Neset and uh, some part of Langas. Now, can you explain if you know why it took them a long time to return to live on their farms? First, there were no houses to go back to. Two, the majority of people did not feel safe to go back. And if you know, why did they not feel safe to go back? The general situation was still very tense and so no one really felt secure. What were they afraid would happen? That maybe more attacks would happen. And one last question on this. Attacks by whom? By the Kalenjins. Mr. President, I have three or four wrap-up questions for this witness which I'd request in private session. It will take two minutes or less. Private session. 